Let's chop it up about all things Knicks with Joe Yoke, host of the Big Knicks Energy Podcast. My man, thanks for hopping on with us, man. How you doing today? Brandon, I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me on. Always, always appreciate when you invite us. All right, man. Let's talk about these Knicks because we're, un- well, not we, but they are undefeated in 2024. I uh, wish we were on the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm honorary shooting guard. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's backtrack a little bit before we talk about tonight's Portland Trailblazer game. Because remember uh, about a month ago, Quentin Grimes said he looks over to the bench after he misses a shot. Fast forward. Now this man is knocking down nearly 50% of his three-point attempts the last four games, four wins in a row. Is it safe to say that Grimes has got his juice back? And who else deserves their flowers during this win streak? Yeah, Brandon, to start with the Grimes thing. um, So one big part of him, this trade that happened and him getting more minutes, his minutes per game have gone up from 13 and a half to the four games prior of the OG trade to now 18 and a half since they've gotten OG and an OB on the team and got rid of RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly, who both were ahead of him in the rotation. So he's actually had more time on the floor. He's able to get more involved in the game. And he's a great catch-and-shoot player, as we see, when he's actually able to get six, seven, eight shots up in a game. It's just a matter of them giving him that time to get that going, which before they had IQ, they had RJ, they had Josh Hart, they had DDV. It was like he was the fifth out of five guys. So it always seemed like that would be a problem if he was off. Yeah, and who would you give your flowers to other than uh, Quentin Grimes? So... I mean, you got to start with the three guys, right? Jalen and Julius, obviously. Jalen and Julius were both nominated for Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Jalen won the award going 27-9-3, and three, which he also included two games over 11 assists. I think he had 12 and 14 and two of the four, which there wasn't a single game all year he had more than 10 when he had both IQ and RJ on there. So you got to give it to Jalen Brunson, the point guard, not the scorer. Uh-huh. And then, obviously, Julius doing what he does, bully ball, getting inside, having more space with OG around him, having more space with DDV and Quentin Grimes getting more time around him. And then Isaiah Hartenstein, man, this dude's defense. I had stocks, which are steals plus blocks in a game. He's had six twice, five and four in the four games he's had since this trade happened. Isaiah Hartenstein, man, is going to be a really, really hard guy for them to rationalize not having on this team beyond this year. And who knew we actually had two Joel Embiid stoppers now in OG Ananobi and Isaiah Hartenstein? Yeah, when it comes to Julius Randle, that is the classic New York sports love story when it comes to uh, his journey here as a Nick. And I heart, I heart's defense. That man, his energy as well, man. He's got that big Nick energy. Uh, well, let's continue. Let's talk about some of the trade, man, because everything looks good early on with the OG trade. But do you think Leon Rose should make another move before the, de- the trade deadline? So I thought the comments that Dante DiVincenzo made about, what, four or five days ago about how he likes how this uh, starting unit's running and he, like, thinks they should actually rock with what they have currently right now because if they were to make a trade, he's most likely the one that would go back from the starting lineup to the bench unit. Obviously, if DeJounte Murray on the trading block, that's been a huge rumor. Lesser names, Malcolm Brogdon, Jordan Clarkson, a couple other guys out there, Tyus Jones, lower-level backup point guard. It really depends on what their price is. Like DeJounte Murray, do you want to give up Quentin Grimes, Mitchell Robinson, and a first-round pick? Malcolm Brogdon, do you want to give up Evan Fournier, a second-round pick, and a first-round pick? Jordan Clarkson, he might be the cheapest of the three. That might be the name I want the most because between Malcolm Brogdon and Jordan Clarkson, Brogdon is a backup point guard and better at shooting the three. Jordan Clarkson gives them more wiggle off the bench and is more of a pure scorer with the ball in his hands. His true shooting percentage this year being darned because – he shouldn't be the best second best player on a team, which he is on the Jazz. He'd be like the fifth best player on this team, which would help out a lot. So any of those three names would be guys I would try to look for. DeJounte, Jordan Clarkson, or Malcolm Brogdon. It seems like when it comes to like the bigger names, Knicks fans, like if if they're gonna go for a big name, a lot of a lot of people don't wanna give up guys for those big names. It's like you got that love relationship with that player. You don't wanna see them go. You just they want to star at it with what the roster that they currently have now. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. Tonight, Knicks, Blazers, Trailblazers at the Garden. Four straight for the Knickerbockers. What do they got to do to make it five in a row? So I think Jeremy Grant and Jordan, or Jeremy Grant and Julius Randle are both going to try to score 30 points on each other. So that's more or less a wash from the offensive <laughs> standpoint. Um, Scoot Henderson, who's actually been inserted in the starting lineup, has been doing a little bit more, but 
I can't imagine him doing too, too much against DiVincenzo. And then if I was to picture how OG Inanobi impacts this game, he's going to make Shaden Sharp be in living. He's going to be living on Ananobi Island for a lot of the game. All they need to do is lock down defensively. The Portland Trailblazers are young. They turn over the ball quite a bit. Double team scoop, get attack him full court sometimes. Maybe throw some Deuce McBride on there. And the Knicks should be able to get Allen running, honestly. They should really, literally win this game like 125 to 100 if I was to pick. All right, last but not least, really quick, 30 seconds. The Knicks are favored by 11 and a half points. The matchups over under is set at 227. Do they cover? And are you taking the over or the under? Go. Well, like I just said, I think they're going to win by like 20 plus. So I would definitely take Knicks by minus 11 and a half. That over under is really interesting because it's like, are the Knicks going to win 125 100 or 130 100? You know, that's why the line set at 227 and a half. I'd probably lean slightly under, assuming the Blazers throw in some of their backups who don't mm -hmm. score nearly as well. And Tibbs doesn't want to pull back, pull the starters for any reason, no matter how big the spread is. So I think he's, I think it's going to play slightly under 227 and a half. I like how you started that off with, like I said, but my bad, man. I don't listen sometimes. Like, my high school teachers is like, oh, Brendan, like I said, if you would have read <laughs> or you would have listened, like I said, I kind of explained what you, the, the, the information that thy is seeking. All right, real fast, man, tell the people where they can find you. At Big Nick Energy, Big Nick Energy merch, BigNickEnergy.com. We got this hat, which is one of my favorite things. I almost wore my big ragu Dante DiVincenzo shirt on here, but just didn't match. Uh, at Big Nick Energy on Twitter, underscore. At Big Nick Energy 1 on TikTok. At Big Nick Energy on Threads. And most importantly, go to our YouTube, where YouTube's about to hit 1,500 subs. We're getting more and more downloads and live streams going on every day. I'm about to go live in about two to three hours from now, so around 3 p.m., depending on when this goes up. And, yeah, just find us all there. All right, appreciate, appreciate you hopping on with us, Joe. Brandon, thank you so much, man.